Good afternoon and happy Tuesday to everyone. Hello Hi. to our online Hello. community. Uh, <laughs> I am Michelle, the outreach coordinator here at Pasadena Humane, and we are joined by the ever so talented and amazing Miss Lonnie. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our final watercolor for um, the half part of this year. <laughs> <laughs> and with us is the ever so knowledgeable Lauren. Hi. Hello. <laughs> we could ask Lauren questions about almost any animal and she would give us an answer. Might not be right, but I'll give you an answer. <laughs> we try. So as Ms. Lonnie said, this is our last watercolor for a couple of months, but we will be back. Um, and so today we're gonna continue on our tour across North America. Um, for those friends that are joining us brand new for the first time, um, I'm gonna share a few webinar reminders with you. Um, and if you've been with us before, you can go ahead and put me on mute if you don't wanna listen to me, or you know, this might be a little <laughs> refresher. Uh, this is an audio visual presentation, so even though you can see and hear us, we cannot see and hear you, but I know that you're there, Harrison. I see you online. Um, so because of that, I want to encourage everyone to use the chat box on the right hand side of your screen to ask any questions that you have about uh, what we're the animals where Miss Lauren is talking about, the techniques on watercolor that Miss Lonnie is using. Um, and even if you have an off the wall question, I will try and answer it as best as I can. Today, we are going to, like I said, continue our trip through North America, and we're gonna talk about the barn owl and the beaver. If you wanna share your artwork with us, we highly encourage it and you can use this link right here and I will go ahead and drop it in the chat box for you. Okay and we do want to ask you all to come back with us in the fall which starts in September to join us for more animal adventures. We're going to pick up watercolor again. We're going to have some more uh, workshops and uh, some things that we're doing are going back to be in person. Um, if you need to look at what we're doing again, this webinar is recorded and I'm going to send it to you tomorrow afternoon. So without further ado, take it away, Miss Lani and Miss Lauren. Thanks, Michelle. So guys, remember before we get started, you're starting off with some cool, either some watercolor paper or just some tough paper. I basically just cut one sheet in half. That's what I do every time I do it with you guys. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The two sheets for both of our uh, creatures, as well as our cool nifty watercolor kit here that I love. It's my favorite one. I actually bought another one, but this one actually is my favorite because you can take it everywhere. Um, I also have a pencil. I have a pen. I have my nifty watercolor pens here. These are so useful because they have all the really cool tips you can use. Um, and then lastly is just a, a little napkin here so we can clean our paintbrushes on the go. And then lastly is our cool stencils you should have received, um, or I saw them in the actual chat box. You guys can go ahead and use that. Now this is a really tricky one. So I'm gonna go really slowly and then I actually have a pre-drawn version for you guys this time, because I know it can be a little bit difficult. So we're gonna put this little owl dude in a tree. That's kind of why he doesn't have his feet here. So what I'm gonna do is position it however you'd like. I mean, you can put them wherever you want. You don't even have to put them in a tree, but I kind of liked kind of putting him in a certain position. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly just do a rough outline. And I kept it really simple this time for you guys, at least for the outside outline. And then we're gonna work on some circling shapes in the middle, like this. So as you can see, and you'll see him with the template, I would say this is kind of an oval circle. So you guys can do it lightly. So if you make any mistakes, it's not a big deal. So just kind of create a circle just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're gonna go ahead and just sort of oval this off like a wing. And you can kind of see down here that that's kind of where the bottom of the wing connects. Remember, I've been doing it a million years. So that's the reason I can kind of do it quicker. And then this part is really cool because you can kind of create your own 
sort of wings effect if you'd like, or if you wanna keep it sort of flat, you can do that as well. Then the last thing is you're gonna create kind of a circle, I would say one third part. You will know, I guess you just create a circle inside just enough for a, an, an owl's face. And it's sort of a top heavy circle. So it's gonna be bigger at the top and it kind of ovals down just like that. So I'll wait for a second. And then this is gonna be heart shaped because he's very sweet. And we're gonna talk about his feathers and all his kind of beautiful, he's, he's just such a beautiful face. It's so um, majestic looking and sort of like a story, very fably. So I'm gonna go kind of almost to the very bottom. You can even go to the bottom guys, if that's easier for you, I'll go ahead and just go to the bottom. And then we're gonna do these cool eyes. Now you can play around with the eyes, but I guess these are ovally, what are they Lauren? Like cat, even like cat eyes. Kind of like almond. -y. Almond, there you go, friend, she got it. And then I'm just gonna take the bottom of the almond and then I'm gonna connect it like that. And I know I'm going really fast, you guys, so just don't worry about it, take your time. And there you go, just like that. So I will go ahead and just kind of show you how that would look. And I know you have your template as well that you can kind of use as well. So just do the best you can. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a tree and he's gonna cut across his body like so. So I would say just start maybe a little bit in from the top of the paper and you're just gonna go down. And what I love about this is you can just draw it however you'd like, no pressure, like that. And then he's coming out of the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like that. And then I'm gonna leave enough for his huge claws. So I'm gonna draw really dramatic claws. And I'm only gonna do two, actually I should do three. I'll do three like that. So this, the hole is actually gonna fit. He's sitting in the hole, like so, you can see. So this part here is actually gonna be painted the color of the tree. This is the tree trunk. Let me see the light is killing there. Okay, there you go. So all of this is gonna be tree space and the rest is gonna be him. So I actually like how he came out. So I'll go ahead and give you guys a second to finish that one. And then the second one we're doing is our awesome beaver. Now he's really funky town too. I really like this guy. And the one I gave you was a like very simple or I think I gave a more simple version. Um, but this was the detailed version. I'm gonna put him at an angle like that. And then let's just do the simple outline again. I feel like Lauren, as we do more of these, they get more and more detailed. <laughs> for my calendar look, I think. Yeah, I think um, because we get a lot of the same friends now, and I feel like some of my friends are really good artists and they're really good at they're getting really good at doing these with me. Honestly, it's so cool when you guys send us the cool ideas. So I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm gonna perch him above me just like that so I can follow along. And there's certain really easy lines that we can kind of see here. So we know his cute little tummy is probably gonna go like that here. And then his cool little back legs, we're gonna go like that just to kind of finish it off. And then what do they call this part of the beaver? Lauren, do you know? That's his tail. That's his tail, right? It's just a regular flippy tail. I just want to make sure you weren't going to give me some cool scientific <laughs> idea for him. Yeah, just a big paddle tail. He's got a big paddle tail. So you guys, I'm just doing kind of a roundabout snout here. And I used it in the template as well. So I'm just going to bring his, it's a snout, right? Or it's just a nose? Yeah, snout, snout and nose are both perfectly fine right. terms. Cool. So, and then he's got big old cheeks. So we're gonna get really big here. And I kind of drew him like he has a very big smile. And my friends on here pointed out that my, that his upper teeth should be bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and get wild with his teeth and pop them out. I don't know if you can see make that. Make them as big as you guys want. Yeah, make really dramatic teeth, guys. I think I was playing it safe, which we don't play it safe in watercolor wildlife stuff. <laughs> and then finally, I'm just going to give them, again, almond eyes, but they're pretty small, actually, in comparison, I think, for whatever reason. Yeah, they don't have very, well, I mean, we could talk about that later, but they don't yeah. have great and eyes. And then, got a little ear, so as you can see, some of the strong points don't seem to be his ears um, or his um, his eyes, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. 
And then this part on the bottom is just adding his feet, I guess. I always think that there's like these new, these other names <laughs> for all of his parts. <laughs> so there, oh, I like this guy. He looks kind of villainous. So there you go, guys. And then we'll add his whiskers and stuff, but he's very smiley. So we were, we're gonna go ahead and start on the owl, guys. And sorry, Lauren, I did give a really long descript this time. Um, we're gonna start with sort of this color palette. So I picked a lot of the browns and these really pretty uh, orangey, kind of oranges. There's white in here as well, you guys. So we're gonna play around with whites and grays. So um, Lauren, why are they this color? Well, like with most animals, their um, their coloring is used for camouflage. So um, mm -hmm. this one that we're drawing today looks a lot like a barn owl. So that's kind of what I'm going to focus on. Um, if you want to draw a female barn owl, you can give her some more um, some more speckles. She has a more reddish and heavily spotted chest than the oh, males. Cool. Okay. So depending depending on if you want to make it a girl or a boy, that's that's one way to do it. Okay. Um, but like with most birds, the females, um, well, actually that's the opposite, sorry. With most birds, the males are much showier and have yeah. like crazy colors. Like if you think of a peacock, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit um, the opposite with the barn owls, but yeah. And why would that be, do you know why? What, Michelle? Miss Lonnie. Yeah. Can you show our friends how to do the tree one more time? Of course. So you're gonna, is my lighting too bright, Michelle? A little bit, yeah. It's hard to see the pencil. Is that better? Yes, take it to your left a little bit. There we go. Am I wrong? Wait. Okay. Okay, guys. So what I'm gonna do, I know it's like I wanna drop my lighting. Sorry, guys. There, that's the better. Just want to make sure you guys can see it. There we go. Okay. There you go. Sorry. Yeah, I have a like really bright light. Summertime's coming. Okay, so you're gonna take the very top of your pencil and you're gonna put two fingers to the left of the page, and then from there you're gonna take your you're gonna freestyle your tree, and it's just going right behind him, sort of like halfway through, and then you're gonna go to the other side to the right and put a finger there and then that's where you can kind of end it if you needed like a measurement. So if you go like that to your paper, you would go ahead and drop it that way. And then you're gonna go ahead and just draw a circle, but it's like he's sitting in the circle. So the circle's gonna end right at the very bottom of his body. And then you're gonna draw claws just like that, if that's clear. Anyways, I hope that helps. So sorry, Lauren. So why is the female, we were talking about like birds and like you said, peacocks and plumage and sort of how the males have a lot, their feathers are just a lot more, uh, you know, more beautiful and decorative. But you said for the out, for the female barn owl, it is really j just as pretty. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just slightly showier because they have the a little bit brighter color red and speckles, but I'm not sure why it must just be some sort of adaptation that they've developed. Mm -hmm. um, something interesting about raptors in general, though, now that you mention it, is that oftentimes females are bigger than males, which is usually opposite, you know, in, in a lot of species. And mm -hmm. um and I always thought that was kind of cool. And scientists still really don't have a consensus on why that is, but um, but some think that maybe it just makes them, you know, better, uh, like that other females won't compete with them for territory or food when they're feeding their young and things like that. So Got with it. raptors like this guy or girl, um, I guess I'll just talk about what they eat since that was a mm -hmm. good segue. Um, <laughs> they mostly eat, um, mammals, so rats, mice, voles, moles, lemmings, other rodents, um, also things like shrews and bats and rabbits, uh, they're nocturnal, which means they're active at night, right? Um, mm -hmm. so squirrels and chipmunks and things that hang out in the daytime are, are usually pretty safe from the owls, um, but it's more more often the the nighttime animals like rats and things that come out that get eaten by them. Um, 
they'll occasionally eat other birds, not quite as often, but sometimes starlings or blackbirds or meadowlarks. Um, and then <clears throat> nesting barn owls. So if this is a female barn owl and she's building a nest in that tree, mm -hmm. she would often um, store dozens of different prey items at that nest site um, while she's incubating her eggs so that she has a bunch of stuff to feed them once they hatch. That's so cool. Um, you keep bringing up raptors, which is really cool because I'm sure that we have a lot of dinosaur fans. Do you know why they're actually called raptors? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not raptor like dinosaur raptor. It's just another mm -hmm. scientific sort of term for birds of prey. But they are related to dinosaurs like the raptor in a lot of ways. Um, so if you look back, and this is, you know, a much bigger, more intense topic that I definitely encourage everybody to sort of look into if they find it interesting. But um, if you look back at like the what's called taxonomy, and that's kind of tracing back the family, um, like genetics of where, you know, what animals evolved into the next animals and speciation and all these other really scientific things. Um, but uh, but you could trace a lot of birds at, to be relatives of dinosaurs. So mm -hmm. birds and reptiles are, are quite closely related, more closely related than they are to mammals. So I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, and I think um, that's a lot of reasons why they choose the colors and the choices when they are trying to figure out what dinosaurs used to look like, right, Lauren? They kind of base it on fe the feathers and sort of the characteristics of birds that we have today. Yeah, definitely. The the modern uh, descendants of those of those animals. Like I always just look at a chicken and I see a little Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. That is absolutely true. So you yeah. guys, I went ahead and I just did a lot of different variations of using the same color. So this is just one color, but this was going from dark to light. And the reason I do that is so you guys can see the differences in the different parts of the bird. The next part I'm gonna do is gonna go in and I'm actually gonna add black. And remember my rule, you guys, is you always add black at the end when you're really sure you're done with all the other colors. So I'm not gonna use true black. I'm actually gonna dampen it down to a gray. And then I'm gonna slowly, and remember guys, if you practice, don't worry if it's not perfect. I'm just gonna make him gray because I know that Lauren said he, they, they live in trees and they live in where the coloration's very kind of, they, they need a camouflage, right, right, Lauren? Yeah, and the barn owls, they, um, they have like that really flat, beautiful face like you're drawing and, um, and the reason that it, it's kind of like that is um it's uh it's like a a way to like catch almost catch noise they use their hearing to um to hunt and so they'll like fly slowly over open fields at night and they have these like slow long beating wings and um and their faces are kind of like um I guess you could compare it to like a satellite dish almost. Um, wow. So they use their their hearing and their and their satellite dish faces to mm -hmm. locate all of their pre their prey. And a lot of times it's you know completely dark, and so they just rely on their hearing, um, which I think is pretty impressive because um, you can't so even see their ears. <laughs> yeah, totally. So guys, the next part, I'm gonna go back to the owl in the end and do the detail outlines in black. But like I said, that's the very last thing we're doing. So I just did gray in there, very light. And then I'm going through and you guys can follow along with me. Um, you're gonna go around that hole you made and you're actually gonna make his little bottom part disappear. As you can see, I went ahead and kind of, it's going away. And you could also erase that, or you can, when you redraw it, if you want to practice doing this, you can erase that part. But the more layers of watercolor you put on, which is really awesome, it'll start to disappear if you didn't draw it really heavy. So just a heads up for that. And I like this part because it's just super chill and relaxing. And why do they um, decide on 
Is it burrowing? Do they burrow in these trees? This is where they have their babies? So it wouldn't be considered burrowing. Um, oh. There are burrowing owls, but mm -hmm. they they usually live, you know, in open habitats all over the United States. Um, but um, a lot of times it's grasslands and deserts and marshes, um, mm -hmm. sometimes stripped of forest or woodlands, um, but sometimes also suburbs and cities. Um, they'll nest in the tree cavities like we're drawing today. Mm -hmm. um, and and we call that cavities kind of like, you know, sometimes we think of cavities like cavities in our teeth, which mm -hmm. is kind of the same thing because it's just like a hole in the tree, just like mm -hmm. a cavity is a hole in your tooth. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're tree cavity nesters. They sometimes will nest in buildings um, and sometimes cliff ledges, other crevices and caves. Um, I guess they can burrow, but it's just less, it's less um, likely sometimes like near riverbanks and stuff they will. Um, so you just don't see it quite as often. Um, and they're called barn owls because a lot of times they're found nesting in barns. That's so, so cool. I was gonna say, why are they called barn owls? Yeah, they like they like barn lofts and even like church steeples and um, other kinds of human structures. So they've even been found in drive-in movie screens. <laughs> That's cool. I yeah. feel like they're super special. Like people love owls because they're super magical. And based on what you said about how they clean up. They clean up stuff like the rodents and certain animals that maybe um, people look at as sort of, you know, just not as <laughs> loved, unfortunately, because I know a lot of the animals that we talk about are actually the, the ones that people don't appreciate in the same capacity. But sometimes, I mean, these are just, sca they're scavengers as well, right? Yeah. I mean, they usually eat live prey. They're not like, they're not really like vultury, mm -hmm. um, but but it definitely will help if you have a rodent problem. Um, they're really effective hunters. They'll usually eat twice a day, and especially if they have um, if they have an, a nest going, they'll have up to um, they'll have up to how many babies in a nest? They will have one to f oh no. <laughs> They'll have like two, two to eighteen eggs. Oh so my god! If they, have, if they have that many babies, then you know they're going to be hunting for a, a lot of mouths to feed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they usually sit on their eggs for you know twenty nine to thirty four ish days, um, and then the babies stay in the nest for like fifty fifty five days before they fledge. Mm -hmm. um, which means that they start leaving the nest and um, and learning how to fly. But mom's still usually feeding them while they're learning how to fly. Wow. So are they um, particularly social beings, like with other owls, or are they very territorial? Um, they're pretty territorial. Uh, they, you know, they do potentially, you know, have have mates for life but um it's hard to I was looking into it actually and it's there isn't a lot of um research because they're so kind of elusive and hard wow. to study so they're kind of like that kind of adds to the magicalness of them right like they're mm -hmm. they're not observed a whole lot so it makes it a little bit harder um to determine exactly what they're social behaviors are that's so cool mm -hmm. yeah I feel like they're in our neighborhood yeah I feel like they're in our neighborhood but if you're not really paying attention you don't really notice them you know mm -hmm. um, Definitely. okay guys. so the next part the final part for this guy I'm going to let him dry and I suggest you wait and then if you want to add more layers so you so his back body disappears um, I would suggest for the detail part of his face we're gonna go ahead and you can go ahead and use a pen if it's easier for you to do that. You can use a regular pen. If you don't have like a fancy pen, you can use a Sharpie, but I recommend a thin tip. And I'm gonna show you um, the sample I have already created. So as you can see, his face actually needs to get lined in with black. And then there's just like a little bit of detail of like darkened areas here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. If you guys wanna go ahead and try. Um, I also put brown in the outlines that I just drew for you guys. So his cool, what is this? Is it, what's it called, Lauren? Like just his, no, it's his, not his nose. What's his it called? Beak. It's his beak, right? Okay, just check. Yeah, they're just kind of like flatter looking. Um, the babies, we get barn owl babies in every once in a while that have like fallen out of their nest and, or like, you know, trees been cut down or something. Um, mm -hmm. And they look so freaky. They're the weirdest looking little babies. They're, like they're aliens, babies. right? They look like aliens, yes. And it's so, so cool. funny because they do have these big eyes still because they have really good, you know, low light vision. Um, and, but they're not, they're like missing a lot of their feathers. And so they just look so funny. Yeah, they even look like, I almost want to say like masks, you know? Yeah. Definitely, they do. Kind of like, they look like, um, like the plague masks, kind of. Yeah, it's so they're beautiful. I mean, it's not even. It's this beauty that's just a very strange, eerie, almost eerie looking beauty. Yeah, I love it. That's why they always make cool magical stories, and there's mm -hmm. always owls in these stories, you guys. I love yeah. it. There's lots of owls in you know popular culture, like we were talking about a little bit earlier about. Um, Hedwig, you know, is probably mm -hmm. the most famous one, the snowy owl in Harry Potter. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they look a lot like these barn owls too. Um, but there's all different kinds of owls around um, across the United States. Around our area, there's, um, you know, great horned owls, screech owls, burrowing owls, like you were mentioning earlier. And mm -hmm. so there's all different kinds. There's some that are really tiny and some like the great horns that are like really big. These yeah. ones kind of fall in between. They're about um, like a foot, maybe like a foot and a half tall. So cool. It's amazing. So how do you like it, Lauren? I love it. She's beautiful. I love them too. He's actually, he was kind of difficult, but I think I can't wait to see what my friends do. I know that Michelle has some cool facts that she's going to share with us right now too. Yeah, lay it on us, Michelle. I, I do. I actually read, Lauren, that uh, barn owls are the size of like a house cat, but they, yeah, only, weigh, but they only weigh a pound. Yeah. yeah, well, you know why? Because birds' bones are hollow, which allows yeah. them to fly. So, All they, right, so we're gonna put wait. yeah we're gonna put our first question up on the board uh why do barn owls have long legs um is it because it allows them to run faster uh, they are able to catch prey hidden under the grass or to help support their body i think i know you're probably on the same path that our audience is on too, because most everyone has answered the same way. Well, that's good. Got a bunch of smarties. Yeah, I know. This group really is a bunch of smarties. So we're going to go ahead and close it. And yes, it is to catch prey hidden under the grass, in tall grass. All right, cool. question, question number two, true or false? Barn owls have coarse feathers. And I know Miss Lauren talked a little bit about the feathers. Yeah, I don't think I gave away this answer though, but mm -hmm. I bet you guys can guess. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close in three, two, and one. And barn owls happen to have extremely soft feathers. So while they fly around at night and hunt, they can stay silent. And these feathers are not waterproof. So you, wow. guys, may have, you guys may have joined us. That we read a book uh, a few months ago about how to keep an owl dry in the rain. So something it is. All right, one more question for our smarty pants out there. How many small mammals can a barn owl eat in one year? Oh, if we do some math, I think I might have given this one away. 
I know you were you were talking about all of the mammal, the small mammals, and I know that they eat things that aren't small mammals as well, but it's That's very, true. very uh, sparsely. That's true. Good point. All right. I think I have my guess. All right. Wow. Okay. These answers are all over the board. So I will say though that the 67% of the audience that went for 1,460 is correct. It averages wow. about to about four small mammals a day. Wow, that's a lot. Oh my goodness. I guess they yeah. got to stay full. Miss Lauren, I know that we are talking about barn animals, but are all owls nocturnal oh is that a trick question <laughs> damien made a comment that he has a local owl that never seems to sleep oh my oh, goodness that's kind of cool i mean owls tend to be nocturnal because they eat animals that are nocturnal but i think with most urban wildlife especially ones that live in like city areas and suburbs they're really well adapted to whatever is around. So if there's more animals out during the daytime that are easier for them to get, that's what time they're gonna be out, so. Interesting, that's a good point. Just a, just a very bold owl that's not afraid of humans. So, all right, Miss Lenny, let's take it away with this beaver. Thanks, Michelle. Um, yeah, Lauren, you make a good point though. A lot of these animals just have to make do with whatever works for their community, right? Well, like how they survive. Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome okay guys so i just went ahead and got started and i'm just using a really cool brown and i'm just going to go over his basic features so and i know that um miss lauren and miss michelle did say that he does have bigger teeth so i'm going to go ahead and open up <laughs> his teeth a little bit more when we go back um but he his uh coloring it seems like it's from what i saw lauren it's just like a really earthy brown is yeah, there a reason just why brown. just brown <laughs> right just um, a really simple brown definitely that you know they match their environment in that way they're in in woodlands and around rivers so they're pretty much the same colors as their trees that they're chomping on um i think probably most people know but if you don't know you know beavers are known for their very strong uh, teeth and wood chopping abilities with their teeth, and um, and so that's why we just we're we're teasing Miss Lonnie a little bit about yeah. the teeth earlier, <laughs> yeah. but all good fun. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, so what? Why? Why do they have such large teeth, Lauren? Like, what are they usually doing all day? Yeah, they. Um, pretty much all day are chomping on trees and building dams and building lodges. Their lodges are really cool. They're like exactly what a lodge sounds like. Like you think of a human lodge, like, you know, that's where there's the food and the warmth and all the good company, same mm -hmm. exact thing as a beaver lodge. They, um, they build these huge beaver lodges. Mm -hmm. um, and they live in them and the entrances are only under in the water so no other <laughs> animals from outside can get in wow and, um and they you know they're they're built right on the ponds lakes rivers and streams and um the lodges can be six and a half feet tall and as wide as 39 feet wide Wow. Isn't that huge? That's like my house. <laughs> yeah, that is super huge. But that's amazing. I and mean, we've talked about like the ground squirrels and the burrows and all these really cool um, little communities that are like throughout the earth. And this is so amazing because they do the same thing. And you said they have their little secret entrances as well, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so cool. And one of the coolest things about the American beaver is that unlike most other animals, they mm -hmm. actually can they can change an entire ecosystem 
by blocking rivers and damming rivers and streams with the trees and the muds. It can create new lakes, new ponds, different floodplains. It wow. can change an entire watershed system just from beavers being there. And it's so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's kind of like inspiring, I feel like a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> And, and they it's kind of like uh, how we build freeways and stuff, right? Like we change the whole direction of current, like we change too, like the things that we build, it's kind of very beaver-esque. Yeah, we, I mean, beavers are, are doing it with all natural substances, which it makes it, you know, uh, still an, kind of an interesting and important part of the environment. Some places they've introduced beavers that weren't native there. And at mm -hmm. first they were like, oh no, like this is bad. They don't have any natural predators wherever they were. But then they kind of started realizing that it was like good for a lot of the fish that were, you know, maybe kind of struggling in those lakes and rivers before um, mm -hmm. because it, it, it gives them a little bit of a better, you know, lower, slower current areas to like have wow. their babies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually helped support some some fish populations. Um, so that's one way that beavers are, are beneficial to their environment. Um, and they, I mean, they're beneficial in a lot of ways, but they, would, do, do, were you gonna ask me something? I feel like I just interrupted yeah, you. Yeah, no, it's okay. I was gonna ask how many babies do they usually have and oh. how social are they? Um, well, they have, kits that's what their little babies are called and Cute. the females will usually have one litter a year with one to four kits and they are there's they stay with mom until at least through their first year um because so the kids will the kids that are born like this year will live with mom as well as the kids that were born the year before and then those kids will leave and then a new set will be born. So she always kind of has two sets with her, like the older mm -hmm. yearlings and the younger ones that are just yeah. born. Uh -huh. And so they have really strong family bonds. They're very social. And um, usually each group is made up of one breeding pair. So like the mom and the dad. And mm -hmm. um, and there, there might also be one or more, you know, related sub-adults that might be older than two years. Um, and they just kind of like hang out and support the family and contribute, but they usually don't breed, which is actually kind of how coyotes are too. I, I always refer back to coyotes because that's what I'm most familiar with, but <laughs> that just kind of reminded me. Um, and the females usually are pregnant or what's called gestation period is uh, about three months. So kind of short. And um, and since they're right near the water, like exactly what you're painting right now, they eat a lot of aquatic um, plants. They're herbivores. So like tree bark, leaves, roots, and then all the like greeny wetland plants that they are swimming around in. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the reason, Lauren, because I feel like they, and they're, the water's really cold where they are, I feel like a lot colder, right? Yeah, yeah, in in some of those like um some of those colder states, we're not so used to it in California, mm -hmm. right? But some actually I went swimming in Mount Baldy yesterday and it was very cold. So there are some <laughs> there are some very cold spots, but for the most part, yeah, we're pretty lucky. Um but that's why they the beaver has such a thick like warm fur coat and mm -hmm. um and that's and why they lit, have right? what and slick and and it can be slick yeah we talked about the otters they're kind of they're kind of like the otters in that way um but actually these are considered rodents these are considered the largest rodents in america so they're a different they're in a different family than otters even though they kind of kind of occupy a similar niche but the Yes, the yellow teeth. Yellow teeth, guys. Apparently, I was wrong. the The one that I did for the 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 promo was like for Hollywood, but it's actually <laughs> this is the real the real truth. Why are they have yellow teeth, Lauren? 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like Instagram versus reality. Huh? <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> um so they have those really long what's called incisor teeth those are the, those front chompy teeth um and they get the orange color from uh iron rich protective enamel coating wow yeah so uh they're kind of like metal teeth yeah to protect their chomps right yeah they can chop uh, around yeah, and so it's really important that they continually wear them down because if they get too long, it could uh, make it so that they can't actually eat food. Wow. Um, so that's why they're constantly like chomping on things, which is kind of like, you know, rabbits and ra and rats and things like that, and squirrels even, they're always like chewing on things to make sure they keep their teeth from growing too long. But kind of like the haircut. probably their most important part. What? Yeah, but it's like, kind of like a haircut for us, right? They yeah, need to like yeah. trim it. Yeah. So guys, I'm editing my teeth, the teeth that I did as we speak, but the teeth are yellow, so I might have messed up a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, no, it's perfect. Yeah. And so um, how long, Lauren, do they usually live though? It seems like it's kind of a rough life. Feels like they are out in the cold, they're chomping, so it feels like maybe they I don't know, I'm curious. You know what? We didn't talk about this, but the owls actually only live like five years in the wild. Really? Beavers? Yeah, beavers live like 15 years in the wild. Oh my God. Well, they. I guess they're really protected, right? I guess if they're underwater all the time and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and they're big. They're actually pretty big. They, the, I think the biggest one, I actually just looked this up earlier. Um, the biggest one on record was 110 pounds. What is a big boy? That is a big chonky beaver. Yeah, it's so cute as that. I love it. They're up to like two or three feet long, not even yeah. including their tail. And they can oh weigh like God. 35 to 65 pounds. So it's kind of like a water raccoon in a lot of ways, like similar size. <laughs> totally. I never thought about it like that before. Yeah. I really like that we're doing the beaver. This was Me Michelle. Too, thank you. This was Michelle. Yeah. I, like I like them. I like them too. I messed up his little teeth, friends. It's okay. I think it's okay. Right. Thanks, friend. This one's and a little they, rough. You gotta, like, I feel like he's a snaggle tooth pirate one. It's okay, oh guys. Gosh, yeah, he's got a he's got like a gold, like a grill. <laughs> he does. He has like a little grill. I love it. Anyway, so the final touch is friends is I know that he has whiskers as well. And would he have whiskers for the same reason, Lauren, that like cats have whiskers and things like that to feel things out? Yeah, yeah. I was actually going to ask you that because I don't know that much about domestic animals. So I was going to ask you if that was true for cats as well, if they use it to see like how where they can fit into like little nooks exactly. and crannies. It's for spatial um, perception, oh, yeah. observation, recognition, getting through mm -hmm. things and being able, it's like measuring sticks. It's like you guys have measuring sticks all over your face to get you through uh, hairy, sticky situations. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. You know, another, another fun fact I just wanted to mention about beavers too is that they can hold their breath for 15 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. That is so awesome. I know. Yeah, I really like this one. This was a good call friends. I really like this one. This is our last hurrah. So how do you like my little, I feel like he's a little pirate beaver, but he's That's making cute. it. Through. He's like, yeah, he's like gold tooth. And then my <laughs> little owl as well. Oh wait, this is the first owl. Look guys, this was today's owl. <laughs> I always have multiple copies. This is very cool. You like it, Michelle? I do. They're super cute. Yeah, totally. I'm so I'm so happy. This was our last one, guys, for the rest of the time. To yeah. the summer break. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up our last three poll questions that we have sure. until September. So uh I hope everyone was paying attention. Kind of. Uh number one, how many beavers can live in a den? Ooh. So is it two adults and two to four kids, three adults and three to five kids, or four adults and six to eight kids? Oh, 
So, and I know Miss Lauren that you were talking about this about you know the um, the mating pair, and then they always have kids around with them. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up. And the answer is four adults and six to eight kids. Wow, that's a that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of beavers. Sounds like a party. Oh. You know, um, party in the lodge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to throw a teeth question in there. So true or false? Beaver's teeth never stop growing. So oh, we talked about this. We talked a lot about teeth today. It's one of the most distinguishing features of a beaver. All right, and we're going to go ahead and close this up. Um, it is true that a beaver's teeth never stops growing, and it's, you know, they keep chopping in order to keep them cut down. And then the last question that Miss Lauren just talked about what is the average time a beaver can stay underwater? Oh, I, I spoiled that one. Sorry. No, that's okay. This this will really show us who is paying attention. <laughs> that's true. All right. Oh. All right. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and close in three, two, and one. So Miss Lauren has said yes. It was 15 minutes and they can still see when they're underwater because their eyelids are transparent. They're like goggles. <laughs> yeah, so I want to see, uh, we don't have any more questions from our audience right now. And unfortunately, Miss Lonnie's not going to be able to say goodbye with us today. Um, she's lost power at her house. <laughs> and I guess it was very good timing since we are at the end and painting is all done. Um, I do want to remind everyone that we've recorded this session and it's going to go ahead and get sent out to you tomorrow. Um, I do want to remind everybody to join us back on September 7th as we um, conclude our trip around the United States and we're going to finish up in the southeast region with the American alligator and the red wolf. So. Those ones are super exciting. So we're going to sign off and I've got a lot of familiar names and friends on us. So goodbye, Allison and Damien and Elizabeth. Um, I've seen Sandy on here and Lena. I know that uh, Harrison and Clayton are on with their mom, Michelle. And we see Susan and Vera every month as well. So bye everyone and enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we'll see you in September. Bye. Bye.